Hello and welcome to Hardcast, where we communicate with the Earth itself and do its bidding, mainly discussing Volume 2 of Archer and Armstrong. I'm Humphrey Erm, and with me as always is Christian Kloss. Hello there. Alright, Chris. So, you finally got to see your favorite character. Yes, and he is and still will always be my favorite character in the Valiant Universe. All right, that's good to hear, because that was one of my first questions here. <laughs> now, how do you feel his first appearance works here? I mean, you've already been, I wouldn't call it spoiled, since, you know, you actively went after it. Well, yeah. But uh, how do you feel like if you've never read him before and were now introduced to him? How does he work? Ooh, tough question. Um, I, I don't know. I can't really say, because a lot of the... Um, a lot of the feelings I had while I was reading... The, the scenes with, with Gilad was just like, oh God, yes, this is awesome. Like I didn't overhype myself. That, that, that was, that was literally my, my feelings towards this just because I was so happy that I hadn't, you know, basically, yeah, basically ruined it for myself. Um, the, I could just say that the, the, the time skips were awesome. Like moving back and forth, seeing like stories of what he was doing in the past, all the failures he's had. But that was also one of the questions that I had about his character. Has he always failed? I mean, I know there's that line in um, that he gave in one of the issues where he said, "Normally, the 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 geomancer will train the next geomancer, but we've basically only seen him ever so, fail." That's a fair point. So I, I can't really remember any scene where we have the Geomancer training uh, the next generation, so to speak. Yeah. So from what I've seen... Um, I mean, obviously... And the more... issue, I guess, as well as we don't have a like, Geomancer character besides K now. Yeah. Well, then so also it's not like, you know, that... we have someone we wanted to keep alive. Yeah, of course. I mean, then later in the Valiant, we get another Geomancer, right? Or... Yeah. Am I wrong? In the, so so basically, K dies. No, you remember. Yeah, spoilers, by the way, people. But again, these are old comics <laughs> now, so... Yeah, but then again, you know, basically... So basically, so I now know that K dies because I know that there's another Geomancer coming up later in the Valiant. Yeah, well, it's more than that. It's the fact that um, what's called uh, K's dies, but then to circumvent this... Uh, Gilad from the future sends back a future. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let, let, let's let's stop right there. I don't want to be spoiled even more. <laughs> no, but but this is no, the no, kind but of stuff... no. That's what that was with the Valiant. That was in the Valiant. Yeah, remember that was the whole way of kind of uh, tricking um, the what's called immortal enemy. Oh man, I can't remember. Like the at immortal all. enemy killed K, and thus you know he was going to bring forth this uh, darkness. Wait, that was but K? at the same time. Uh, yeah, yeah, that she was the whole like point of the valiant in a sense. You know, she was like the big oh, uh, like, death. I can't, I can't remember at all. Yeah. It's and been the whole it's thing been, there as well. Yeah, it's been was, like over a year. And the whole thing there as well was that the next one that the, the immortal enemy was going to kill was the one in the future. But Gilad then uh, was called circumvents this by sending that one to the past right after he killed the previous uh, geomancer. So this geomancer is now safe, like for eternity in a sense. Huh. Yeah, it gets very. It's I, I like these kinds of things because it's right on the, right on par with like DC and Marvel in terms of like the most convoluted way of solving yes. Your problems. Yes, yes. Your time travel always solves everything. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I gotta say that the but character kind of... in, the character introduction was really nice. I, I like that they had the whole. I mean, it was it didn't take long, but I liked the, um, like we were thrown in the in the midst of it and. Gilad was already like on their tails and you know they kind of didn't show him but they were introducing him like he was always in the shadows and stuff like that. I think that was a really nice present presentation of him um but yeah it's just oh man I love this character so much I mean I can't wait until he goes back to his green suit because this suit even though it's like really cool and it's just, it's tactile it's, it's 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 very useful I mean especially with all the pockets basically <laughs> Um, I, I do like the design of the other suit, like the, the green hood and stuff like that. Mm, I agree. I, that's part of the question as well. Um, I mean, if nothing else, the costume may change. Yeah. So but you I think mean, it was a good way they changed him up? Well, again, I've, I've, I mean, seeing as a person who's just now been introduced to him, like actually, like really 
been introduced to to the character now, like properly. Um, I feel like the suit works for who he is. I mean, because he feels like he's some sort of assassin. He's kind of like Ninjak, but not, you know, not as ninja y. But so, and then again, I also like that he, to see that he has in all these different styles, you know, pertaining to the um, time that he's in. You know, when he was in China, you know, he had the a Chinese warrior outfit and it was, it was really nice. I, I really like those uh, designs. Oh God, they're so beautiful. Mm, well, also then having uh, what's called the three scars uh, along with his like overall pretty, um, I wouldn't say unique face, uh, face or like hairstyle. Yeah. But it feels like you can, you know, kind of make him look like him. Because that's something I find it's a bit tricky with a lot of superhero comics. They, a lot of the, like, non, like, costume characters lack, like, specific, you know, facial designs that make you feel like, oh, yeah, that's Bruce Wayne. Right, right. I mean, because Bruce Wayne is basically just a black-haired guy in a suit. You know, I mean... If yeah, I mean, no again, you know, there's these little things that suit yeah. him. But yeah, like the yeah. way uh, the way Greg Capullo draws him, it's very different from the way Neil Adams draws him. Yeah, of course. Like if you were to put them next to each other as their Bruce Wayne personas, yeah. you know, you wouldn't be like, "Oh, right, that's obviously Bruce Wayne." Right. No, but I do like the three stars. So I feel he does work well here for a character who has to be, um, well, constantly, you know, recognizable throughout different time periods. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, <laughs> then we're in agreement. <laughs> No, no. I mean, I just, I just think that is it, he. He generally is a, a very. I mean, it, it, it was thought out. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the um, one of the problems that they had was like, okay, well, how do we identify this character throughout all the timelines? And I'm pretty sure someone threw out, well, let's give him a facial scar, some sort of facial, you know, deformity that everyone can recognize him no matter where he is. And I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. You know, and then later on, they came out with a reason why he has those free scars. Like, right. Why would an immortal have scars? Right, right. And I, I think, I think that way, I think it works. And I, just generally, I mean, I like his design. I'm, he reminds me a little bit about uh, a little bit like um, the Winter Winter Soldier with his uh, mm. with his hair and his outfit, like with the the, the black outfit there. But otherwise, yeah. yeah. Even his arm, his left arm kind of has a bit of a, again, it's not metal, but he has those, like, I'm not quite sure what they are that hang there. Oh, yeah, those those bombs with the... Is that what they are? I don't know. Yes, kind of look like a little... I'm not quite sure what to describe. Well, aren't they... Yeah, I thought they, they were those bombs that he had. Like, he had these, like, little... Because that's, that's, that's what Archer shoots at in the last issue of this volume uh, to, to blow him up. Mm, true. Which is also that, which is yeah, also really weird. Like, why would you have like so many explosives so openly on your body? But then again, he is immortal, so it doesn't really matter. Exactly. But it must you know, hurt. I, I probably live life very differently. Yeah, but it must hurt. But the, yes, in terms of uh, since again, it might this question might then not work that well since you didn't seem to remember core concepts of the Valiant. But I was just curious about how knowledge of the Valiant affected this volume and how uh, knowledge of this volume affected the Valiant, so to speak. Since this was an introduction um, of the Geomancer and stuff, stuff like that. Well, again, I knew who the Geomancer was. I mean, they didn't really go into it in the Valiant, I don't, if, I don't, if I'm remembering it correctly. I, I kind of knew what it was. I knew that there was some sort of connection to the Earth. I mean, obviously, it's also in the name. But it was kind of nice to have like a personification or an animalification of the uh, of Mother Earth uh, in this comic, so that we had some sort of person to connect the whole the whole thing to. So I really liked that whole Mother Earth Earth uh, character, kind of explaining everything to her. Um, I don't think any of this knowledge changed my opinion on the Valiant. And uh, I think the only point in this entire volume where I thought about the Valiant was at the end of volume, of uh, issue eight, when they showed the portal, like, or whatever that was, that, that purple goo th ooze thing that they had that they were going to activate in the in the ninth uh, issue. 
yeah the null void thing yeah i thought that the uh immortal enemy was going to come out of there i was actually thinking that myself even you know having read this being a reread and stuff but i was kind of like oh wait was this a foreshadowing to him already yeah that's what i thought it was i mean yeah i, I thought that was a yeah that, that, that the uh immortal uh, enemy is going to come out of there and that's where that whole like that 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 he that, that gilad had found some sort of way of of putting him away and that now these guys you know play with forces beyond their ken and then they um they activate or they bring back this immortal enemy that now gilad has to find a new way of defeating him and that's where that whole chase will then start again but that's that's what i that's the only that's the that's the only time i ever thought about the Valiant or what I had learned from the Valiant. All right, because rereading this, I felt this was like, it made the Valiant feel like a direct sequel to this specific volume in terms well, of having both K and the, what's called Gilad, the like present and important. Well, again, And she a... doesn't do that much until the Valiant. Yeah. Well, the thing so is- So it really does here... feel like, you know- Well, you have to remember that I'm not very good at remembering details, especially like with, with comics and- Generally, I mean, generally when you and I talk about any kind of TV shows, something like that, you can literally quote the TV shows and I will have a basic recollection of the plot, you know, because I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I just have so much, I guess I just have so much, you know, stuff going on that I, I personally deem more important that I don't. <laughs> I mean, this is, <laughs> I'm not trying that, to that, like... was a, that was a very, I was, I was waiting for a jab there just to respond to you. And you were going like very like politic, like very politician wise there. Things that I, I personally yeah. deem important, not, not going for the uh, obvious. Well, I try to remember important things, Humphrey, you know, no. like my bank account information or you know, not who, which character said what and in what precise manner. Yeah. And I think I, I have the I have the what's called the um, like the most wins in terms of that. I mean, we had some arguments about how what what was the quote of something. Yeah, but, but I think I tend to win those. All right. Okay. Well, you know, we won't talk about the other things that I've beaten you at. Um, but the <laughs> the more important things. Um, no, but the thing is, like, uh, because I can't remember all this stuff, I because I, I had no idea that K was that this was the same character as we met in the Valiant. I had no recollection of this. I thought this was a completely new character. When I saw her on the cover of um, what would be issue six, like the, the second issue in this volume, I thought, wow, she's really attractive, um, kind of sexy. Can't wait to see, you know, like, yes, this is obviously the Geomancer. Can't wait to meet her. All right, let's go. And then... Um, and then that was kind of it. I mean, didn't. And then when she she introduced herself as Kay, I was like, okay, no idea who this is. Um, seems pretty cool. I kind of like that whole thing about her sleeping with her um, opponent of that talk show. That was kind of funny. And you know, I liked her as a character. Um, so far, she is a little bit, from my side, still a damsel in distress. And but she's gotten better as the uh as the volume progressed um which i really really like and you know because she has some really cool powers so i hope that she really learns the full extent of those powers and then can actually use them now that you've said i hope i hope you, she what's has many issues left yeah how many does she have none or, that's what i mean like she's not present at all until the valiant again what She's very underutilized, ah, which might be on. why they thought she'd be okay to like sacrifice in a sense. Right. Ah, uh, shit. God damn it. No, I mean, um, I gotta say that's like a very nice, I mean, it's one of those things where it's all like very, how should we say, foreshadowed throughout these issues in terms of this whole idea of seeing the world as like a computer program. Yeah. Like, you know, seeing everything as like a code and I felt that was a nice kind of kind of interesting sort of I'm not sure if it's called Deus Ex Machina, but sort of fixing everything, leaving it all as it was. But the idea of rewriting like the universe's code so that this virus, this like I don't know, cosmic virus can't 
do anything. I mean, that's like, wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is actually pretty interesting. I mean, I had loved the, I loved her analogy of like, it's like a virus. You can only make one for either Mac or uh, Windows. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting the the way that they present this. I don't know. I like so, it. Uh, there was another little interesting thing, which um, um, I'm just going to interrupt real quick. You... Um, I'm, yes. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry if there's going to be some uh, some thunder on this podcast because uh, there's a storm brewing here in Germany, and the lightning and thunder has just been striking. So now on with the show. <laughs> All right. Well, no, like I was going to say. Um, there's a, what's called a bit of a vague kind of foreshadowing thing for way further into the future. Okay. Would you because, consider um, this a spoiler or what? I guess it would be in a sense, but I guess fine. So I won't say like the main thing, but uh, basically the Eternal Warrior mentions that the reason why he couldn't protect the previous Umancer, the guy, you know, who died amongst those like Nazi monks. Yeah. You know, because he was, volume. he was constantly in the air. Yeah. So that kind of gives the whole point about, you could say that's part of his power set in a sense, knowing who the Geomancer is and always being aware of where they are as long yeah. as they are present on Earth. Right. And I will say that that's something that's this point or like this plot element uh, is then brought up again in the current, um, what's called, event comic, 4001 AD. Okay. So, hmm. yeah, something that I thought of when I read it, they're like, ah, cool, you know, so this was established this early. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. So, cool. actually, and there's another thing, too, in another comic that's also about, more about Gilad, though, but also his connection to the Earth and how, well, like, his power stems from it. So, but yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of nice rereading these, though, because it kind of, I like the fact that it's not so much of, oh, yeah, they totally changed that now. Right. It's more of... Right, this was established as soon as this, but it wasn't really explored. Or, oh, so they took this little thing and now made it into a big deal. Well, right, I mean, but I gotta ask them if. Or yeah, me. yeah. No, go on. I mean, I was just, I was just no, saying. No, no, but I'm, you had a point. Yeah, well, it's not a, really a point. It's more like a segue or like a side thing. Is that I, I really like. I mean, I was, I was just reading the comics today. I mean, I, I kind of uh, when I, when I was finished with my exercise, I kind of sat down and I. Um, I started reading the comics and I was just like, ah, oh, man, I really don't want to want to read this now. It's like, ah, oh, it feels like a chore. But then I started reading it. And I think if, if we would stop this podcast today, um, like after this episode, like we say like, no, you know what? This isn't, um, this is stupid. Let's not do this anymore. Um, I think I would still continue reading Archer and Armstrong. Oh, really? and, then of, and then of course the, um, the Gilad uh, comics as well, at at the least, you know, um, just because I was just reading these and it was just, I, I started kind of getting, you know, even though I didn't like Armstrong at the beginning, he's grown on me now. I mean, he's, he's kind of um, been pushed on the sidelines now that Gilad has come in, which of course, you know, for me, it's just like heaven. <laughs> um, but it kind of felt nice to read this and I was kind of invested in the characters. I was invested in the story. I was like, Oh, these are cool guys. I like, I want to, I want to follow them. I want to see where they're, where they're heading, what they're going to do. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, it kind of made me feel like, you know what? I, I do like comics. I want to continue reading comics. I want to, you know, you know what? I'm going to buy the, the new Aquaman rebirth, uh, <laughs> uh comic. And, I'm going to, you know, try to see if I can get back into it a little bit more and, you know, not just with Valiant, but also, you know, DC and Marvel and stuff like that. Cause it's just like, you know what, this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So if anything, thanks for that. That's Humber. good to hear. <laughs> no, that's good to hear. So again, you know, I don't want to force anything on you, but you tend to, you, and maybe it's, that's, maybe it's just more of a, um, your reluctance is more of a self-preservation kind of thing. <laughs> Cause you know, yeah. if you don't, like, if you do like, well, only a little bit. Yeah. And then you've spent a lot of money and time doing something, uh, you know, that's yeah. like, could be used for something more useful, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Like, like me catching up on two and a half seasons of Avatar in one weekend. Mm. Um, Damn. I remember that. I remember just coming back to school and like, Jesus, man. Yeah. I was like, on Friday, you told me to watch the, ep the one episode. And then on Monday, 
I had had watched the entire season of the series. But it's not kind of thing. didn't like cartoons, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. Like, um, yeah, but we don't need to go into it now. But just like this whole idea that I'm, I'm somewhat of a half half nerd, half jock kind of thing. You know, where where I'm like at a at a at a, at a battle with myself of like you know because because I, I, cause I, I will. I will read comics and I think they're awesome and I'll really get into it. But then at some point I'll be like, ah, you know what? This is actually kind of stupid. And then I start, you know, going out more or exercising more and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. I kind of fluctuate back and forth. And then when finally someone gives me something new and exciting, like Attack on Titan, you know, I'll, I'll someone's like, hey, watch an episode of Attack on Titan. I was like, okay. And then suddenly I watched them all, you know, the entire season. And then, you know, you'll be like, hey, you know, let's play some... Pokemon or let's play some magic. That's the new thing. My girlfriend gets me into magic. And before I know it, I've bought a new complete set of magic de- uh, magic decks, like multiple, like a deck builder. And we play like every weekend now. And yeah, so it's just like that kind of stuff. And and I think I'm at this point right now with uh, comics where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to dive in again. You know, I bought a really nice hardcover of the Throne of Atlantis storyline and oh, it's so beautiful. <sighs> ah, comics, man. They're great. They're great. Nice. All right, let's well, get back to the story. While we're on that point then. Yeah, but while yeah. we're on that point, and, and at least Valiant related. So I definitely recommend, I mean, I haven't read it yet, but I'm definitely going to buy it this as soon as it's out. Yeah. This new character that I mentioned earlier, Britannia. Yes, I saw some uh, Twitter updates about that. I follow Valiant on Twitter, so... I've been getting mm, some updates. Yeah, that I definitely recommend uh, based on your, like, you know, how much you like uh, the history aspect and the Gilad and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the idea of having a, like, period piece Roman Roman crime procedural kind of thing. Oh, my God, dude. That just hit all the spots. All the spots. Yeah, it just, like, I don't know, just to me when I heard that, and that'll just kind of be vaguely connected with the rest of the Valiant universe. Like Gilad will make an appearance and Armstrong, right. I'm guessing. Right, right. So um, this is before, uh, I think I mentioned this last time too, but it's before Exo Manowar as well. So he won't be there, unfortunately. Okay. okay. But yeah, you know, definitely if you're on that whole comic b- b- binge kind of feel. Yeah. But back to the volume in question. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let's get back here. So a uh, Project Rising Spirit is mentioned, connecting yeah. Archer and Armstrong to Bloodshot and Harbinger. Yes. How do you feel about that? Does this flesh it out more? Does it make you more curious about how this connects with those other properties? Or, <laughs> well, again, to be honest, I mean, um, I, oh man, I don't, I don't know if I'm just not like like what's wrong with me. Like if I just have a really bad memory, or if um, you know because I'm not invested in it. You know, because I'm not like constantly discussing it. You know, because I'm thinking like, well, you know, it must be worse for people who actually read it. You know, with through the floppies, because you know they had months and months in between all these comics that were kind of like, um, you know, binding all of these together. For me, when I read Project Rising Spirit, like or Rising Spirit, when you know the, she she looked at at uh, Archer's body, I was like. Oh man, I've heard that somewhere before, but I couldn't for the life of me say where I heard that. And that's it's ironic because we we you know, we just read an issue with the Project Writing Spirit in it. You know, we just had that volume last week. And or last, you know, two weeks ago. And and that just that says a lot about me how I can, you know, I'll read I'll read a volume and then it's just it's just like the information is just in the time that I read the the volume and then by the time we do the podcast and as soon as the podcast is over all the information is just all gone but i did recognize that i knew okay this is something and then was mentioned again it was actually said project rising spirit instead of just rising spirit and i thought oh yeah 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 it's something is that that, does that does that have something to do with harbinger with that 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 organization there with that harbinger um thing but then yeah but then i just skipped it because it felt like something that was just mentioned on the side well, it was just kind of mentioned, and obviously yeah. it's, you know, set up them for a future encounter. Exactly. And I think it's more of this one of the things where, um, 
I guess, yeah, it's, it's one of these things that they put in there to foreshadow some sort of uh, connection. And I think it will kind of stick in the back of my mind, especially now that we're talking about it, so that when they actually discuss this in the comic or in the story storyline, um, I think then I will have like an aha moment where then someone says like, oh, part of the uh, we're the Project Rising Spirit and you're our leader or something like that because you are the Project Rising, you are the Rising Spirit or something something like that. Um, I will have this moment where I'm like, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, they said that, you know, she scanned him and yeah, 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 that's all that. Yeah, that's what happened. But I didn't make the connection right away. So I'm sorry about that. I guess I'm not <laughs> as much of a nerd as I just claim to be. No, it just seems <laughs> like we're kind of opposites in some way. Like uh, you're not very observant about things that you're like reading, you know, like focusing on maybe. Like in terms of just collecting or like uh, recalling uh, like information, right? But then I'm like very unobservant about things around me. As a recent uh, incident on a train. <laughs> yeah, we literally there was literally a couple next to us having a a shouting argument on a, on the train while we were coming back from Regensburg one day, and uh, Humphrey did not notice at all because when we left the train, I made a comment about it to him and uh, another friend that we were. Um, we were traveling with a shout out to Alessandro. Um, and, uh, you know, Alessandro immediately, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, that was really weird. And I was just like, what? What couple? They were arguing? I had no idea. Like they were literally shouting next to your face, Humphrey. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I would like to eavesdrop. Right. Um, is it eavesdropping when someone's shouting? But yeah. Um, in some sense, yeah, I guess I guess I'm more invested in the real world as you are, Humphrey. <laughs> I have I have enough going on in my real life that I don't have to, you know, you know, make make uh, fictional worlds that important to myself. So, you know, uh, sounds like what a nerd would say. I, I wait. Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, I'd ask this idea, and it's supposed to be kind of ironic that that's what makes you a nerd. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, oh, well. we're all we're all nerds in a certain way about certain things. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, so it's just, yeah, it's just a, it's just the thing that I I feel like these comics. Yeah, I like I like reading them in the moment, but I don't retain a lot of the information that's in the comics. So I'll know basic plot points. I'll know. I'll know, for example, what has happened generally. I know where characters are, um, but I don't invest that much time in it. That's why I never wanted to watch something like Game of Thrones because it felt so character heavy. But when I started watching it more regularly, because you know my girlfriend kind of you know egged me on to do it, um, I noticed that I could enjoy the series without having to know all the characters and what all the relationships are and who all these things are. Like, you know, just like in the recent episode from last week, this isn't like a real spoiler, but they thankfully mentioned in the conversation who that guy was in relation to what character. And then it all made sense because it was like, oh, right. Yeah, that happened like four seasons As ago. As you know... Well, they didn't do that, but but I mean that's the worst thing. I mean, any script writer, if you have the words as you know in your script, delete that sentence. Um, <laughs> Good, we all know, so we don't have to explain it. Right, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, and I feel that's the same thing with with these comics is that I can enjoy these comics without having to know all the details. You know, I don't have to know that that Project Rising Spirit is connected to Archer necessarily in order to enjoy these comics. You know what I mean? No, but that's good, though, because that um, builds into kind of what started this podcast and the overall uh, our joint interest in Valiant, the idea of reader-friendliness or new reader-friendliness. Yeah, and even a casual reader. I mean, I would never say that I was a, like a, I wasn't, I'm not going to say that I'm a hardcore nerd because I'm not in anything, but, you know, I, you know, I dabble in nerdness. And and so I'm a, I would say I'm a casual comics comic book reader, and I'll pick up a comic every now and again, maybe buy a a, a bundle of of some a volume of some sort of a collector's edition. But you know, 
I'm not the kind of guy, sadly, I mean, I would love to be the kind of guy who, who buys like floppies or, you know, every single week or every single month have a, have a list of the comics that I'm going to buy so I can read them. So yeah, well, who knows? Maybe that will come someday when I have more of a disposable income. <laughs> ah, well. So, no, but exactly. It's just nice to... I mean, they're just nice stories in that sense. And I feel with Valiant in particular, it gives this kind of same but different feel. Yeah. Like, instead of being like, okay, so which version of Aquaman is this? Or which, mm -hmm. you know, okay, is this tied into something else? Or, mm -hmm. wait, is this is this canon anymore? Right. You know, there's like, there's no question really. I mean, they have this one reboot and everything so far is working. And um, yeah, you read what you find interesting. And also with this kind of, which seems to be prevalent with a lot of the, the what's called American like superhero publishers. You know, they're doing this whole writing for the trade. Yeah. So, um, you know, you'll have this like jumping on point, so to speak. Like, okay, we finished this, you know, quote unquote Z season. Well the arc. And now yeah. there's like a new story. Yeah, an arc, yeah. yeah. Now there's a new story. So like if you want to st start reading now, like if you didn't like how the previous one was going, you know, read it now and see if this one's better. Yeah. So it is it's kinda of like always a bunch of even if it's like labeled as in this case like you know issue number five. Mm-hmm. It's kind of presented as, you know, come on, pick it up. It's got a new character introduced and you know it's like a new story. Right, right. I was going to bring something up, though, that I was going to be pushing out way a bit, regarding Archer and his um, power level, so to speak. Mm hmm So how is he feeling to you? Because right now I'm, based on, like, later events, I'm kind of curious about um, if he's OP, so to speak. Um... I mean, he... I mean, mainly it's the whole scene at the end when he's, like, possessed... Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Um, when he when he's in the that last enemy thing, I think uh, it's it's interesting because I'm thinking that he as a character is not OP because he has he's putting limitations on himself. You know, you know because of his upbringing, because of who he is, he has to put limitations on himself. Or he he has learned to put limitations on himself, so he stays in a certain level. So like like he said, you know, like this last enemy said, you know, he was just being polite when he said that that he couldn't beat Gilad or or he didn't realize his own potential. And I like that. I, I feel that that makes him an, an interesting character. It makes him uh, it, it makes him like I, I believe that he could he could develop more. And I think that at some point, uh, kind of like Superman in his fight against Doomsday in the animated series, um, he's going to have this point where he can say, I can go all out now, and you are going to feel the full capacity of my strength. And honestly, I can't wait for that moment. And I think it would also say a lot to his character when he does, like, if he does hold back. I mean, obviously, if he's in, like, a dire situation where, you know, he's fighting a character who's obviously weaker than him and he's not fighting back because he doesn't want to hurt them. I'm not sure if that's something like that's going to happen or if it already has. Um, but other than that, if he doesn't do something like that, I feel like this could be a nice character trait where he is... Because he does feel like a very nice guy. He always says Mr. and Miss to everyone. Yeah, I, I like that he's he's a humble Christian boy, you know, from the South probably. Yeah, I like that about him. I mean, there's a lot of character development still still in front of him, I believe, where I feel like, you know, I have a... Oh, prediction. yeah, just wait till the next volume. Oh, I'm, I can't wait. <laughs> and I also hate to be exactly the thing we were discussing before regarding you and me. Yeah. In terms of nerdiness. Yeah. But I just have to mention that it was Dark Side Superman was fighting. Ah, uh, yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, okay, okay. okay and it okay, was okay, Justice okay, League, not okay, Superman okay, animated series. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I, I, I was quiet all this time and kind of like, okay, okay. And now I just had to let it. <laughs> well, I didn't remember. I, you know, <sighs> if you, were, if, you <laughs> if you recall, I did not say Superman animated series. I just said in 
an animated series or the animated series. So, you know, because I, cause I knew yeah, in my mind, right. I knew in Ambi- my mind. Ambiguous. Yeah, because I knew, I, I knew when I said it, I can't remember if it was in the Superman animated series or if it was in Justice League. So, yeah. But that was like an amazing block, scene. Though. Yeah, but I, okay, I get, whatever, yeah, it's no, the same, no, it's, 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 it's the same guy, whatever, whatever. Same guy! <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I I know the difference. Uh, don't worry. Don't don't worry, uh listeners. I I know who Doomsday and who Darkseid is. But come on, you know, uh, you d- don't don't give two characters the same starting letter. I mean that that's that's screenwriting 101, okay? All right. All right, continue. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, um I think I've gone through most of the questions really. So, right. main thing was just uh, to kind of discuss um What's called the overall tone, like the humor of the, the this book. Yeah, I mean, we start off with that. What I gotta say, it's a hilarious opening chase scene. Yes, I mean, there's just something about. I always love the kind of thing with a getaway from one of those. I'm not sure if you call it a rickshaw if it's in India. Or just something about like run, run, quick, quick, <laughs> like in the yeah. giant bus right after you. It's like Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like yeah. I mean, I would love to see that in a film. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have to be like uh, Archer and Armstrong related, but just you know, like an action scene like that, it's like fun. Yeah. So as well as then the things like with again with my favorite the uh, cult or like sect in this uh, universe. Oh uh, god, the one percenters. The one percent. Oh Jesus Christ! I just love them. They are no, but so just little things stupid. like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's so much fun. It's just like. With your death, you know, we'll have a have a zero point zero 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 eight seven whatever whatever, you know, increase yeah. in profits. Yeah. And ah. I guess little things like this other sect and the null. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, with um Nothing with is forever. turning like Greenland into a giant golf course. Yeah, but And yes, this whole idea, they're all about nothingness, so they like holes, so they love golf. It's like what? Yeah. Yeah. No, but like I, I could totally see. We uh, has this has. I don't know if this has been done already, but you know that 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 Captain America meme that's been going around the Hail Hydra meme. Mm. You know where where the people put drawings in, like of different characters with like the opposite of what they believe in. Yeah. How awesome would it be to have like a picture of Gilad in that, and then he says like, um, "Nothing is forever." Mm. You know, just to kind of say like, because I feel like that is like a real, because um, wasn't there like one guard that said it to. Um, Sword, what's his name? Sword, that, yeah, that, Sword was it, yeah, Sword, yeah. When Zorn was coming into that base, the one guard said, Nothing is forever, and then he replies, with, Nothing is. It felt a l- lot like you know, the Hail Hydra, you know, and I don't know, it just it just felt very, uh, I don't know, like that. Well, it's definitely I mean, their I, calling card, uh, yeah. or well, not calling card, but it's like their motto. Mm. It's, it's, uh, but it's also interesting to like. I like that in all those um, in all those those pasts that we went into, we always found um, characters who were related to the null. You know, they all said that nothing is forever at the end of the the you know at the, at the end of the page when they went back into the future. You know, um, like all these these villains, and I felt that was very nice because that's one of the things I loved about. Or I love about um, the Assassin's Creed series, it's just this connection to everyone being connected. You know, all these huge names having some sort of connection to this one criminal organization, or like this organization who doesn't think they're criminal, but you know what I mean. And I kind of love that. You know, having all these like Blackbeard being part of it, and I just I don't know. It's just fun. It's it's really fun. I, I love it when people like take this. What is it called? Historical fiction? I think it's I called. I guess so. I mean, fiction set in historical periods, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they take people who actually have existed and then they change it. Like, that's one of the reasons why I loved um, uh, the uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Mm. It's it's just so good because it lends itself so well. I mean, I mean, obviously it's tragic that, that, you know, that family had to go through so many deaths and so many illnesses and stuff like that. But then to link that all to vampire vampirism, that was just like, oh God, that's so awesome. That's so much fun. Just to kind of like add a little bit of a twist to it, you know? 
and I'm talking about the book. I mean, I, I, I watched the movie too, and I mm. liked the movie. I liked the movie. Um, but the book was, was just amazing. It was just so much fun. I don't know. The book was better. I, I wouldn't say. But yeah. So, yeah, no, regarding that topic, though, um, I'm guessing there's a bit of a, um, a time limit, but uh, I was called, uh, I guess, a too soon kind of thing, depending. Okay. No, but like, because I was kind of thinking about that myself a bit, um, especially with more like tragic kind of characters, like take like Alan Turing. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, his life, you know, is really awful, you know. Uh, Oh, yeah. What's called uh, with his, uh, you know, how uh, this did like the state that he had saved, you know, thanks to his yeah. like invention and brains, yeah. you know, would treat him like that because of his homosexuality. Right. And to kind of put that in there and be like, no, no, you know, he, it wasn't suicide. You know, it was these guys who killed him. Yeah. And that's what I meant in terms of time frame, because yeah, who the hell cares about, I believe it was, was it Archimedes that died there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, I don't think we have Archimedes next of kin really upset about his portrayal. No. Or, you know, think about the Ken so, about Kennedy, that, Kennedy assassination right there. Mm. The Ken Kennedy yes, assassination. Yes, that, that was the explanation film. of the character, yeah. Of yeah. How, he, how he was killed. Yeah. So, yeah, no, but that's what I mean. It's that kind of stuff where it gets tricky. Like, I like it too, you know, for the same reasons you described. Yeah. But a part of me kind of just yes, gets a bit like, hmm, you know, it's... There's probably limits in terms of, uh, I mean, it's the reason why people get upset about things like, you know, Jesus was an alien type stories. Right. You know, or, or like Jesus was the first psyot or was that a mutant? Right. I mean, again, it's, I think that's like, oh yeah, that would explain so much, you know, within a fictitious setting. Right, right. It's interesting. But regardless, yeah. uh, it would, you know, people take offense to it. Yeah, of course. Um, speaking of that, that scene with the, um, with the Kennedy assassination, you know, like in the background, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Like, so did, did Gilad get killed or, or what happened there? I didn't get that quite either. I think it was more of a, um, like metaphorical look. Like it wasn't like an actual like flashback. It was more about how he was always in power, so to speak, this, um, Let's call this enemy, so to speak, this uh, virus. Yeah. But it's um, I don't know. I I was actually a bit confused myself too, because like, okay, we're seeing him through the you know uh, crosshairs, and then like, oh wait, there's Gilad. So I mean, obviously Gilad must have been present at some point there. Yeah, but, yeah, no, 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 it makes mean, sense. Well, because I I think that it's just a way of explaining how he could die if his mother would let him because it was kind you of like after well the mother hmm? i mean is, isn't that his mother who on page 103 on like in this in the ninth volume or not ninth issue ninth issue fourth page hmm. i would say that that's not his mother quite sure. because he says mother to her and that would also kind of get into the whole um thing because at the beginning of the the fifth yeah, the fish, fifth issue um while they're fighting in the in china um the two brothers kind of talk about like their mother like do you remember her face and do you do you, you know that kind of stuff and you know gilad says i don't even remember her face but i feel this would be kind of a nice thing if, like he sees her every time he dies or like gets close to dying because then it would also explain because he's he's currently burning like he just survived an explosion and I think that Gilad would then, he would basically die, but then he sees his mother and the mother basically decides to give him back because his, his mission is not yet fulfilled. Hmm. Because I'm the not war sure. I mean, again, continues. it works in that sense. Yeah, but I think it would be mother nature, so to speak, then. Like, but maybe he sees it in the guise of his mother because the thing yeah, with Kay, be, yeah. you know, seeing this like monkey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as she pointed out, uh, I can't remember wh what she referred to, to us, but she mentioned something like, yeah, it's like this like old book I read or something. You know, she took on like, yeah. I, I took on a form that was more pleasing to you. However, um, just, just like uh, from a meta standpoint, her speech balloons are a different color, though, than the um, Mother Earth. 
Because mm. Mother Earth has these like green, like this, this kind of a green uh, aura to it. And the Mother's is distinctly blue. Mm. So this is just where I think that this, this could be his mother that's basically, because just like with the, um, at the end when we see Mary Kay or Mary Maria, whatever her name was, um, she has the ghosts of her, or the souls of her parents inside her. So would it be so, mm. so wrong to assume that when the explosion happened the first time or that little machine thing happened the first time that the mother's soul was implemented into the, her sons? Ah, uh, maybe. I'm not and quite sure if it's been brought up later. And maybe that's what makes them immortal. Maybe that that, that basically the, I don't know. I mean, I, this is just speculation. I don't know if it's been you know explained somehow before. But yeah, so this is just what I'm kind of thinking right now. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, but this is the kind of stuff I like, where it's not doesn't feel like it's a mistake or anything. It's just something that's brought up and like. Huh. Yeah. So no, but again, it's. Uh, well, maybe we'll find it's an interesting later. world. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. So, and you seem to like have enjoyed it better now than last time, because I remember you weren't super fond of the idea of all these like uh, conspiracy theories and cults and stuff that they all were real. Yeah, well, I mean, that was just with the last issue where they were, because because they were really pushing it that all these things were real. I mean, with here they didn't really they didn't. I mean, because they didn't have to introduce all these uh, characters and have to explain all these conspiracies, so it didn't feel so, um, you know, thickly spread. You know, it was just, mm. you know, we we had a, a a little part of the ones percenters that was it. Like, they were just like, yeah, you know, we exist still. And it was like, oh, yeah, I remember them. And then we just didn't, we didn't, we moved on. There was nothing else. There was... I mean, I could totally understand, like, yes, we're going to make an entire golf course out of Greenland. I don't know. Sure, why not? All right. So, yeah. well, I think that's about it in terms of uh, this volume. I think we've gone yeah. through most of the things of interest. That's good. So I'm guessing then overall this was a, what's called a really good volume? Uh, yes, very good. One, one of my favorites so far. Awesome. Well, you know, hopefully you'll like volume three as well, even if Gilad isn't in that one. Well, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm liking the characters of Archer and Armstrong a lot more now too already, so I believe so. Awesome. All right. Well, next up, we're going to be going back, uh, what's called, to a little more sci-fi with Volume 3 of Exo Manowar. Exo Manowar. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> Planet Death. Oh, uh, okay. Well, is this the war? Nope. Oh, okay. All right. I will see. <laughs> Yes, I will. All right. Well, that was the ninth episode of Hardcast, detailing Volume 2 of Archer and Armstrong. For more content from me and Chris, check out robotkeith.com and follow us on Twitter at Humphrey underscore Aram and at Christian D. Kloss. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or listen to us directly on robotkeith.com slash podcast. Catch 